Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are talking about this Sizzly Eye Concealer, as well as revisiting this Sizzly Blur Powder. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. So welcome to the new filming space. Now, I just want to talk really quickly about this because this is where we will be for a while now. Now, tomorrow's video though, I filmed previous to this, so it'll go back to that outside, not the outside, but the living room setting. Um, but this is where we will be. So. The lamps are from Amazon. I will link them below in case you are interested. They come gold, but it's like a greenish gold. So I went in and I painted over them myself with some other paint that I had because I wanted to warm up the gold a little bit. So if you do order them, just know that I did kind of adjust the gold there. And then this thing right here, this piece of furniture, this is a bed. So it's a Murphy bed, but it's in a cabinet. So most of the Murphy beds I've seen are like wall units and the whole thing comes down. This one is like a, it slides out and the mattress is actually a tri-fold. So it's really nice and compact. We rarely have our house full of guests. It's happened I think once, um, but it is nice to have just in case we have lots of family here at once. We want it to be prepared. So we do have this, but it saves so much space. So if you're interested in that, I will link it below as well. Just know that it's very heavy though. It's between 300 and 400 pounds in terms of the weight. I have a very strange thing that I like to do, which is I am a person who likes to put together flat pack furniture. I find great satisfaction in following the directions and then having a completed thing at the end. So I was able to put that together, but I'm really excited about this setup because it is contained. So the lighting is artificial. I know it's not as beautiful as natural light, but it's more predictable. So with natural light, I always am checking the weather. Is it going to be cloudy? Are the clouds gonna be moving? Uh, what time does the sun set? Those kinds of things. So I'm much more held to a schedule when I'm relying on natural light. So one of the goals here was to utilize this so that I could be more flexible in my filming so I'm able to make more videos more frequently. Um, this also gives me time to spend more time with my husband on weekends because typically that's when filming happens on the weekends during the day. So I miss the day with him. So also when I film, my poor husband has to tiptoe around the house and stay out of that area. And that's like, allows a lot of access to the rest of the house. So this way I can just close the door and he can have most of the house while I'm doing this. So that's a better situation all around as well. So I hope this is okay with you. Um, please give me feedback. I would love to know how to make this even better. So as you watch, if you can think of other things, let me know. I'm still not done decorating this room though. There's uh, some storage I still have to put in place, but I was going to make it part of the back room, but you can't even see it. So unless I move this desk forward and really expand the background, I don't know. So right now my makeup though is sitting in those acrylic drawers that I showed you earlier. Um, really nice to have this all in one room. I think that's it, but I just wanted to introduce you to the new space, let you know this is where we will be. I have been in this room before, probably a couple years ago at this point, before I went into the living room. I was filming in here, the lighting was slightly different, the background was totally different. So if you have been with me for quite some time, you know I've gone through issues with lighting, lots of issues with lighting. Um, I've gone through issues with trying to find a place to film. I've gone through issues with editing, um, color correcting, all of that stuff. So I hope that this kind of controlled environment will eliminate a lot of that issue and then I can be more efficient. So I appreciate your patience and sticking with me through this. Hopefully we'll be able to move forward in a more efficient, effective way. But today's video, sorry that was so long and rambly, but I thought we needed to take time and just talk about the change here really quickly, and then I won't talk about it as much anymore. But I'm going to be talking about this concealer I picked up. It is the Sizzly Eye Concealer, and this was a viewer recommendation. So I'm not sure how comfortable people are with me calling out their names when um, I am talking about something they recommended. But if you're the person who recommended this and want us to know, please leave that in the comment section so we can thank you for that. And then we're also going to revisit the Sizzly powder. Now I've talked about this powder before in a demo. I've done a comparison between this and the Chanticleer blur powder. That's pretty in depth. Um, so if you want to see that, I will link that below. And what else was I gonna say? Oh, so we were going to try this under makeup because many of you suggested try this under makeup. 
And most of my makeup is sizzly, not all, but most of it is sizzly. So we're gonna go through that and let's go ahead to try it. So I've got on only eyebrows and just the tiniest bit of the three-in-one under my eyes just for some sunscreen. I always like to make sure I have sunscreen under the eye area. I try to make it really kind of very faint though because I want to see how the concealer works as well. Um, but I'm going to try on the Sizzly powder underneath foundation because many of you suggested that I try it and many of you referenced Michelle Wong's video. So I did take a look at that really quickly and I saw that she did half and half. So I do wanna try half and half as well. I mean, I did this once, but I feel like, I don't know if I was really able to tell, but I think half and half will really show me. So let's do half. I think she just stippled it on too. Actually, I feel like it does a nice job of blurring my discoloration. I didn't pay attention to that when I tried it the first time. I think I've tried it like once, maybe twice. It's a little cool tone for me though. Yeah, I wish it had more of a golden tone to it. If you haven't seen my video where I compare this to the Chantecai powder, I do that as well, pretty in depth. Um, so if you want to know the difference between that and this and why I use the Chantecai more than I use this, that video will give you a lot of information. Okay, so that is half. I mean, it definitely does a nice job of perfecting. I know that some people put powder under their foundation, which I don't have an issue with because I will go in back and forth with concealers and powders and kind of like sandwich them depending on how my concealer is going. So yeah, so to me, this is not such a strange thing to put powder under, although I don't normally do with the foundation. Okay, so I've got two plus sand here. I think the reason I don't use this one as much is because it's a little bit cool tone for me. So I've got the Shiseido foundation brush here. It does add some color to my face though. Really thin layer. I just like really, really thin foundation. Okay, so there's um, the blur powder next to the foundation. Let's go in with the foundation on the blur powder side. I do a lot of stippling around these areas where there's discoloration because I feel like I work so hard to make sure that's all kind of evened out that when I go like this, it will wipe away a lot of the makeup so I don't move this around too much. Okay, I'll put some down my neck because I feel like my neck is going to be totally a different color. I don't like to do this. I don't like how it feels, but for today's video, we will do it. So let me look quickly. Okay, so there's more of a sheen, a more of a perfected appearance to this side versus this side. This side's a little bit more, I mean, it's not dull, but it definitely doesn't have the same radiance as this side. It's definitely more of a porcelain or like a, like when I see a sculpture and it's really smooth like that marble, that's what it looks like. Kind of like the effect that I get when I use the Chantecaille powder, that kind of thing, but instead putting it underneath. Interesting. Okay, so I like that. I don't know why it took me so long to try it, but I think I try so many things and then I mean to really study something and I don't have the chance to because I'm busy trying the other things. But we're gonna go in with this new item to me. It is the eye concealer, and I have to thank one of you for letting me know what shade, because this was so hard to find swatches on, I just was trying to compare just to make sure. I feel like the more expensive the items are, the less swatches are available. Very strange, um, but, so I went on one of your recommendations, because I know we were the same foundation shades, so I went with this. Tinted concealer instantly masks dark circles and signs of fatigue, beautifies the eye contour area, visibly smooths out fine lines, reduces puffiness, long-lasting applicator brush included. So I feel like, okay, tell me how this works, but I think since there's a metal thing, let's try this directly on first, and then we'll try the brush as well. Or do I do this and then I brush? Maybe that's it. Okay, so that seems like a lot, no? And then this brush, I'm guessing, do I go? It's a really cooling feeling though, that metal um, applicator. Okay, this is really bright. I feel like I put too much on. Uh, this is a lot. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put some on the other side with this brush. Let's, well, I wanna show you half and half though, so 
I feel like, I think this has a very limited shade range as well, which is unfortunate. So I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's brightening. It's definitely brighter than my foundation. I think it would be good to just brighten up this darkest part right here as well. So there's the difference between the two sides. That's really nice. Yeah, I definitely think that you get, it, it looks less tired. In terms of like how it feels, I mean, it's refreshing I think mainly because of this right now. So we'll see how this continues to perform. Yeah, it's very um, creamy. So this is not like your most lightweight kind of concealer. I'd like to do a comparison between this and some of my Click Pen concealers, like the Clay de Poe, like the Chantecaille, but we'll just try this today. Oh, it did kind of deep puff that area. That is really interesting. So let's see over here. I think this eye gets a little puffier than this eye, but I like concentrating it kind of right in that deepest part. I think the trick is to concentrate this really in that one darkest area. Okay, let's see how that works because that's definitely puffier on that side. Now, I feel like I don't have to conceal so much today, but let's see, I brought a couple here because I am trying to do other concealers aside from the Clay de Poe because I feel like I feel like that's the only thing I use on camera. So I've got the Pat McGrath and I've got the Hourglass. Let's see, let's go in with the Hourglass and see if it's the right shade for this foundation because sometimes, sometimes I'll pick concealers based on the foundation shade because sometimes they might pull a little warm or a little cool. So let's see, this is a bit light. I might need to miss a little bit of Pat McGrath. I don't know, these might be both. I might need to get my um, Dior because Pat McGrath is quite, actually it's a bit warmer than it. This is Pat McGrath. Let's see, it might be too warm. Yeah, let's go get the Dior. I recently used this one, 3WP. This is it, compared to Hourglass and Pat McGrath. So this is a nice concealer to use with this particular foundation. I have to say, I am so impressed with this under eye concealer. It is beautiful. I've been kind of trying to play around with my concealer here, but I just wonder, maybe I don't need to powder because it like set really beautifully. It, it's not creasing at all. And it's been a few minutes because I went and I checked in the mirror. I always like to check in the mirror to see how the concealer is doing. I have to say also with using Sizzly, that powder underneath, my concealer sticks really nice. Over here, I'm having a little bit more trouble getting that concealer to kind of stick and become one, but this one did such a nice job over here. So for concealing purposes, I really like this one. So nice. Okay, I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Hourglass Eye Primer here. Um, let's go ahead and powder with this Sizzly powder because if I need to add more concealer, I can just go on top of this powder, which I really like. And it did a little blurring too of my discoloration as well. So maybe that will help. I mean, you can still see a little bit sticking out. This is a very nice brush, by the way. I have um, the Kevin Aquan, this buffing brush, but this Chantecai brush, this is so soft. Yeah, there's just a tone to this um, powder that I, I don't think it brightens my skin though. I feel like it has the potential to go a little bit like dull, but we're gonna try and fix my blush problem right now. So I'm gonna kind of take these two together and this is the uh, trio. Something about being a trio. I will list it below. Um, but I'm taking just the two lightest colors and I'm going to go like this and bring it all the way up. So I've done this before where I take them all and I kind of swirl them together and it comes out like a peachy powder. So I'm taking this, let me just <laughs> double check here before I put it all over my face. Um, I'm taking this brush and I'm just swirling it all together like this. 
So when I did that and I swatched it, it looked peach. So let's, let's see. Just to kind of brighten a little bit. Um, oh, I think that added too much pink. Do you see that? Okay, don't do that, but we'll just even it up over here. Let's go in with the bronzer. Now I'm really pink looking. Oh well, okay. So I'm taking the bronzer color and I'm using this right here. I'm just gonna bronze with this brush. Yeah, this one's a little tricky to get into just because of the, um, just because of the shape. But if you have a brush like this, it works. Let's see, let's do eyes. So I got, I'm gonna try this because I don't really have anything that can make like dimension on my eyes. Yeah, let's just try this. So I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss brush. I'm gonna take the number 16 and just kind of put this all over. I'm taking the lightest shade here, this one. Then I'm going to take this color right here, the tan color. I'm going to just make like this. This actually works really nice as an eyeshadow. Okay, and I'm going to take a number 17 brush. I'm taking the same tan color, but I'm going to just concentrate it more in that crease area. I'll check if there's a warning here that says something about like, don't apply near the eyes. <laughs> Let's just powder under this eye just to test. So I've got the uh, airbrush number one, Charlotte Tilbury. I really like this for the under eye area. And let's just powder really lightly. I just wanna see the difference because this one is setting really beautifully with no powder. Impressive, that's really impressive. Cause I wonder if powder's gonna make this look worse. So we'll see. I almost feel like it looks better without powder. Let's put on this eyeliner in the waterline. This does have some like sparkly bits in there. Okay, do you see how I have to like pull them all out <laughs> to look at them because I can't tell right away what's what. So we'll tight line and just do a little liner on the top. Take a number 20 brush. I'm going in with the same tan color here. I'm gonna run that underneath. That usually helps with the, like the gathering of any concealer that's right in those little lines there. Okay, I'm gonna go over this with the Sizzly. Next, we're going to do a mascara. And it's a mascara one of you told me I have to get. <laughs> so, and you actually sent me a picture on Instagram wearing it. And that was so intriguing to me to see the lashes, legit lashes. So if you are interested in this, I'm posting a full day wear test. I was really impressed with the picture I saw. And this was not on my radar at all. So I'm gonna skip to this right now at the end of application. Okay, back with mascara on. Like I said, I'm going to do a wear test on this as well so you can see how well it performs over time because again, sometimes you just don't know when you get a really beautiful mascara how long it will last or if you're gonna have any flaking or smudging. So let's go in with this bright lip. I know how you like a bright lip. So this is the number 41. I think for a little hydration, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of the, this color, the Rouge Coco Flash in Flushed, just in the center. So just to recap the mascara, that will be an upcoming video, so look for that if you are interested on the wear time. I'm not sure when that's coming, but it will be soon. Um, but let's talk about the powder. Wow, what a beautiful finish on this makeup because there is powder, this powder as the base. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a difference, but it's quite significant, but mostly in real life. It's, there's more of a like glow, more of a perfected texture appearance on the side with the 
powder versus not the powder underneath. So that's really beautiful. So I'm glad that I tried that and really focused on it. I tried it before, but I wasn't really paying attention, but this time I got to pay close attention. So if you do have that, I just, again, wish they had a brighter shade. I would like more brightening with it. It's a little bit like, it's a little bit dulling on my skin just because of the shade. Anything with just like the slightest coolness can dull my complexion. So that's how I would improve on this one. I think they should offer a few different shades. I know depending on where you fall in the range, it can be a little bit tricky for you, this particular powder, because even though it says translucent, I think, or something universal, it's, I don't think it is. Um, and then this, wow, this is amazing. So thank you so much for encouraging me to try this. I'm so amazed with how this looks. It definitely does much better with no powder. I'm going to show you a close up of what that looks like. Powdered side versus non-powdered. The powdery side has a bit of creasing. Yeah, it definitely looks less natural. It looks so natural though here without powder. So this is a side with no powder. And this is a side with powder. I think you can see that there's a little bit, just a little bit of creasing. It's not bad, but it just looks so perfected. Let me see if I can get both in here. So I think you can see the comparison pretty easily, or at least I can. I hope, I hope it picks it up on camera because it's really clear in the mirror to me that this side looks so much better than this side, the side that's not powdered versus the powdered side. I just can't get over it. I don't know if I've tried a concealer like this, I don't know if I've tried a concealer that does as well as this did. I've got to, th let me think about that, but this is really impressive. Now I do have the La Prairie coming. That should be here in a couple days. I'll do a separate video on that. And then I'm gonna do kind of like an eye concealer roundup once I've had a feeling of where we are with everything because I do like to try things out for a while to provide the most thorough information. If you've seen any of my videos before, sometimes I'll make a spreadsheet um, and then I'll take notes. So if you like more thorough reviews and you found your person, I sometimes will do things just to get like information on shades out if I get something right away. But in terms of performance, I like to spend time and so I'm kind of late on reviews, but I'm gathering information that whole time. So that's why I'm a little bit later on my reviews and maybe some other reviews that come out. By the way, number four is perfect. I don't think I would seek out another shade here. So if you are my shade and wondering what to pick, this was a perfect recommendation. It says it's an anti-dark circle product. It masks dark circles and shadowy areas, ultra pure pigments, and targets puffiness and signs of fatigue. Now I did notice that because it was puffier here. Um, it was earlier in the day as well, but it did take that down. I was really surprised. It says it visibly smooths the look of wrinkles and fine lines while enhancing the beauty of the area around the eye. And I really feel like there was smoothing here. Now just, I would just caution you if you have a normal eye area to not powder it. Again, it looks so much better not powdered. Now I can't speak for if you have an oily eye area, I don't know. Let me know if you have that and you feel like you need to powder or not, but it's just so pretty without it because it has like the sheen of skin too without powder. This might be the only under eye concealer I would not powder with. It helps to reduce the appearance of under eye bags, which I did see, which was a little surprising because I don't know if I always believe their claims, but I did see that happen here. It's supple creamy formula ensures an easy application, natural finish. I will also watch for the wear on this. Now when I do the mascara video, I'm going to be doing check-ins. So let's take a look at that as well when I check in, even though it won't be a like concealer video, I will make a note and just take a look at it as we check in with the mascara later in the day. So I hope that was helpful for you. Again, please let me know, give me feedback. So what Everyday Edit's really about is refining the process and finding the best things and things that might not be working. Let's continue trying things out to find the best things that work. Same thing though with filming. So what's working here? I wanna keep those things and what needs to be improved and let's try some things to make it even better. I always appreciate when you leave such kind and constructive feedback. It's really helpful. So thank you so much. And that's it for today's video. So please take care of each other, stay well. And if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.